we've known her and, and uh, admired her and have a great affection for her for a long time. University of Notre Dame Law School professor yeah. Paolo Carozza yeah. first met Amy Coney Barrett 25 years ago when he was a young professor and she was a Notre Dame student. Now they're colleagues at the law school. There's uh, a great hope, really, and, and I think a, a widespread perception that she would be a terrific justice if she were appointed. WGN spotted Barrett briefly returning home from the law school today. She's seen as a top candidate to fill the Supreme Court seat left vacant by the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Barrett is 48 years old, born in New Orleans, and now a South Bend resident. She's married with seven children. And a mother of seven, including two of them who have been adopted, of course, and, uh, and so a biracial family. and. Uh, and uh, also a child with special needs. Um, so I, I'm sure that those things, you know, really deepen her humanity. In 1994, she earned her bachelor's degree in English from Rhodes College in Tennessee. Then in 1997, she graduated from Notre Dame's law school. She served as a clerk for Justice Antonin Scalia, then went into private practice in Washington, D.C., before returning to Notre Dame as a professor. In 2017, President Trump appointed her as a judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals Seventh Circuit in Chicago. A brilliant mind. Uh, as a jurist, a razor sharp ability to integrate all sorts of things um, and really to get to the heart of the matters. Everybody who's ever worked with her has seen that. Democratic leaders oppose the appointment of a new justice on both political and policy grounds. They argue just six weeks from the presidential election, the voters should cast their ballots first. And second, they say the appointment of a conservative to replace the liberal stalwart could shift the balance of the court and perhaps open the door to reversals on health care. LGBTQ plus and abortion laws. Through the vacancy filling nominee of the Trump administration, this really is an assault on all of those things. History, tradition, rules, and the mutual respect of the United States Senate. Barrett, like her mentor, Justice Scalia, takes a strict constructionalist view of the Constitution, viewing the role of the court as one of restraint, not expansion. She would bring a perspective that's different from uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who she'd be succeeding uh, in that role. Um, how that plays out in specific issues, I think it's very hard to say. In a one-on-one -on -one interview with WGN America's Joe Donilon, the president dropped hints about his pick. We'll be appointing a woman. I'll be announcing it on Saturday. Do you know who it is right now? I have a pretty good idea. I haven't made a final decision, but pretty good idea. The president had previously said of Barrett that he was, quote, saving her for Ginsburg's seat. Among Barrett's friends, there is deep concern that the nomination hearings will turn into a circus and may center on her deeply held religious beliefs, something she addressed in her hearing when she was appointed to the federal bench. In the rare circumstance that might ever arise, I can't imagine one sitting here now, where I felt that I had some um, conscientious objection to the law, I would recuse. I would never impose my own personal convictions upon the law. Under the Golden Dome, Notre Dame students could not be interviewed because of COVID-19 restrictions. But this time of year, campus would typically be buzzing about a big Saturday football game. This Saturday, the focus will be politics, not pigskin. I have to think a lot of people will still be, uh, you know, tuned to their televisions, but it won't be for the football game this time, but to see what happens uh, with regard to the nomination. And Barrett reportedly met with President Trump at the White House earlier this week, though she is back in South Bend and this evening was spotted by neighbors and reporters returning here to her home in her minivan just in time for dinner.